just like uh, Peter, I do want to extend a, a, a huge thank you to the folks at uh, uh, University of Manitoba and to Andrew and uh, uh, Jillian and my colleagues here, Benita and uh, uh, Peter, and for folks here for coming out tonight to chat with us on these issues. And, and, and for all of us, this is near and dear to our hearts. It's, uh, and uh, before I came to Saskatchewan, where I'm at now, and so you're going to have to forgive me uh, when I throw ideas and observations. Some of them hopefully will be uh, useful, some will be just half-baked and completely off, so be patient with those. But uh, before I came to Saskatchewan, uh, where I raised my boys, uh, my wife and I was in northern BC, that's the University of British Columbia. So coming here is, is kind of, feels like coming home in, in, in many ways here. And, and across the north, I really want to pick up on Peter's point, because the north can be seen as area where there's the problems of social pathologies and so on. But it's not. The North is really, that's where Canada's future is. And there's a huge missing success, set of success stories. And this is a very, very important time in the North, across Canada, across our provincial North, and in Northern Manitoba. But, and one of the things that are very similar to my whole pro, or adopted province now in Saskatchewan in, in Manitoba, is there's a high Aboriginal population in uh, northern Manitoba as there is in northern Saskatchewan. That's a huge defining reality of, of our two provincial norths. And so when we're looking closer at the election, uh, Aboriginal participation in the election is really, really important. And you look across Canada and the whole discussion about how do you, how do you increase uh, Aboriginal participation in the electoral process and one of the things that might, uh, okay, we got the puppy uh, flipped up here, is uh, having more Aboriginal candidates. And in the north, we got uh, five ridings in the provincial north here, all have uh, high Aboriginal populations, First Nation community populations. And does it, in fact, we're going to have to either, how do we pull up? Uh, uh, actually, you can see the bottom part here. Perfect. That's been down just as, oh no, that's where that's where it's just perfectly. What's, one of the interesting things is we, we did a study of Olean Birdall at the University of Saskatchewan, Chris Adams, who's a Manitoba and here down at Pro Research and teaches at the University of Manitoba as well, looking at uh, 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 electoral uh, voter turnout on reserve and off reserve in in Manitoba. And one of the things we found is you take, for example, in these writings, there's a higher than average voter turnout where there's one First Nations candidate running in, uh, in a seat. Where there's one First Nations candidate, it increases significantly over uh, the, uh, the general trend, which is uh, under 30% for First Nations turnout in the provincial election. And you can even see here at Swan River, it's in fact over 50%. Russell, uh, well, that's uh, Southern writing, but 40%, Thompson, 30%, and so on. Interestingly, though, when there's more First Nations or Aboriginal candidates, it, it actually de declines. So when we're talking about myths, having more Aboriginal candidates in and of itself doesn't result in more Aboriginal turnout. And what might be uh, part of the explanation for that? Well, one, if there's one First Nations candidate, it's easier to mobilize First Nations uh, residents to, if there is, and there's lots of voting uh, studies that show whether it's gender or ethnicity and so on, that there's an affinity effect of voting for somebody that's more similar to you and to understanding of your interests. So then why wouldn't that be when there's a case where there's more? And part of it, we were having a little earlier discussion uh, with uh, Peter and, and, and Benita, and one of them may be in the, the politics, in, in when you got most of the communities in the north, I'm sure it might be the same in uh, northern Manitoba as in northern uh, Saskatchewan, northern British Columbia. A lot of communities, it's, uh, you know folks, they're your neighbors door to door. So if you have two First Nations candidates, well there may be a disincentive to be engaged because how do you, you pick, right? And that, that makes it tough politically. So that may be actually a disincentive. Now I'll flip to the, to the next uh, slide, and this one, this is the interesting thing, a whole pile of numbers, but I'm going to narrow in, generally in Manitoba, when we're looking at elections, 
show that uh, if you look at uh, uh, on reserve uh, uh, boulders, thanks kindly, a very high uh, support for the NDP uh, traditionally, and less so for, for progressive conservatives and uh, for liberals across the province. That's where the data shows. But what it also shows, interestingly, when there's across the parties, having an Aboriginal candidate for your party doesn't really change that much in terms of the general support, with one exception. The data show that for uh, Conservative, for example, it makes an enormous difference. If the Conservatives run uh, an Aboriginal candidate, their percentage of, for Conservative vote goes up quite consi uh, considerably. So there's, a, I would say, one of the myths, especially in the academic world and on university campuses, is you know, Aboriginal communities more left leaning. There's no hope for Conservatives. This is a write off. And it is. And so all parties, we have it all. All, all of us have an interest, whether you're an NDP, Liberal, or Conservative, of engaging Aboriginal uh, people and constituents and on reserve First Nations. So for Conservatives, for example, there is an interest to, to be uh, absolutely engaged in First Nations issues. So that's one of the other uh, that myths that we're looking at. And if you look federally, look what happened last election. We had seven record number of First Nation MPs elected, or Aboriginal MPs elected. Five were conservative, two NDP. So it shows that right across the party spectrum, it's very possible. So all parties have an interest and should care. And if you look at the demographics of Saskatchewan, you look at the demographics of Manitoba and the increasing Aboriginal populations, in the north is the vast majority of the population. We have the highest, uh, among the highest percentages across Canada, both uh, in Manitoba and in Saskatchewan. And so we, it really does matter. Aboriginal participation elections do matter. Last thing I wanted to, howdy, one of the last things I wanted to uh, uh, point out is about the North. We see it in the news, you know, climate change, or the Russians are planting a, a pole or you know, a flag in the North Pole and taunting Canadian sovereignty is actually done in somebody's swimming pool. But anyhow, they waited. But you would get the sense at times that uh, the North has. And I tell you, that's a thing that comes and goes. And the North doesn't matter as much as to the Southern Canada as we think. A lot of people think of the North as just the three territories. And I tell you, the provincial North, they'd be defined North anywhere else, whether it be Russia, whether it be Alaska, and so on. And when you think of it, there's 1.4 million people living across northern Ontario, northern Manitoba, northern Alberta, northern Saskatchewan, northern British Columbia, Labrador. That's where most of the resources come from this country. And uh, I, this is really important that the North get engaged and get stuff on the policy agenda, because Canada has changed. The, the old days of, you know, where folks, you think of people my generation older, everybody either came from a rural area or a relative still in a rural area. Now we're in an era where most Canadians are increasingly are intergenerational urban Canadians, disconnect from the North, disconnect from First Nations, disconnect from rural areas. In Canada, there's a lot of new Canadians. We need new Canadians. They enrich the country in immeasurable ways. If you look at Toronto, 50% of Canada, 50% uh, of Toronto was not born in Canada. And there is no connection to the historical relationship of Aboriginal peoples in this country. So the North and First Nations says, got to get together, uh, united, but also be proactive with new Canadians about stories telling the story about what's important about Aboriginal Canada, about Northern Manitoba, in the newspapers in Winnipeg, in the newspapers in Toronto. And I think that's uh, uh, critically important. But that's part of the story, and I'm sticking to it.